to beta thalassemia so what do you know about beta thalassemia what kind of inherited uh, disorder it is It's also autosomal recessive. Yes, it is a autosomal recessive disorder. And what is the problem here? Mm. Uh, it is a autosomal So usually hemoglobin, it has two alpha chains and two beta chains, right? So in case there are defective beta chains, it causes beta thalassemia. Okay. Mm. So it's an autosomal recessive disorder. Again, a hemolytic anemia. It is because of the defective beta globin chain synthesis. And in this, there is extra vascular hemolysis due to rele release into peripheral circulation of damaged red cells and erythroid precursor cells, which result in ineffective erythropoiesis. So it can be thalassemia major, intermedia, or minor. Major will be if both the genes are defective. Intermedia uh, will be in between <clears throat> where there are minor symptoms. And minor, uh, major will be blood transfusion dependent always. Minor might not require. It's a beta thal trait. So maternal risks you can remember. So the risks you, uh, it affects the heart, liver, and endocrine system. So in heart it causes cardiomyopathy, liver, liver cirrhosis, and endocrinopathy. It can cause diabetes, hypothyroidism, and hypoparathyroidism due to iron overload. Okay. okay. And cardiac failure, this is again a recall question. The primary cause of death in cases of uh, thalassemia cases is cardiac failure, seen in over 50% of the cases. So all women should be assessed by the cardiologist with expertise in thalassemia and or iron overload prior to embarking on the pregnancy. An echocardiogram uh, and electrocardiogram should be performed as well as a T2-weighted cardiac MRI. Okay. Okay. Same. Sickle, like sickle cell, yes. So screening. So because it causes, it affects the heart, uh, then uh, liver and uh, endocrine system. So uh, for heart, you have to do an echocardiography and T2-weighted MRI. For liver, you have to do a Ferry scan. For endocrinopathies, so diabetes can occur. So diabetes, usually, how do we check? We do an HbA1c levels, right? Uh huh. How do you screen? Yeah, yes, ma'am. You do an HbA1c, but in cases of thalassemia, HbA1c is it's basically you are testing the uh, uh, in this also because the hemoglobin is defected. It here you are testing a type of hemoglobin, right? A1c type of hemoglobin which has higher affinity for glucose, right? Yeah. So, in cases of thalassemia, since the, there is defective hemoglobin, so HbA1c is not an effective screening modality for diabetes. So, in these patients, you have to do a fructosamine testing. Okay. Am I clear? Yes, it should be less than 300, which is equivalent to HbA1c of less than 43 millimole. Okay, so fructosa mean, uh, so you do, this is again one of the important recall questions. So how do you screen for uh, this uh, diabetes in cases of thalassemia patients? You do not do HbA1c, or, uh, you do fructosa mean levels. Okay. Okay, so this, this only applies for uh, sickle cell disease also. No, this doesn't apply for sickle cell. It is only for thalassemia. And okay. Okay. then... For thyroid, you do a thyroid function and, and it should, the patient should be used thyroid before uh, embarking on pregnancy. And for bone, you do a bone density scan to assess for pre-existing uh, osteoporosis. Also, vitamin D uh, should be checked and optimized before planning for pregnancy. 
Okay. This is the same thing. Diabetes is common in thalassemia patient and HbA1c is not reliable in these patients as this is diluted by transfused blood. Also, serum fructosamine is therefore preferred for monitoring and ideally it should be kept less than 300 nanomole per liter for at least three months prior to conception. Okay. 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 Then again, for these patients, you have to check for uh, red cell autoantibodies. So you do an ABO blood group and full antibody, atypical antibody screen. Then iron chelators. So uh, usually uh, these patients, because they have high uh, chances of iron overload, so they are on iron chelators. So uh, there are various types of iron chelators. So this D uh, ferrocerox and D ferriprone they are not uh, safe in pregnancy. So you have to discontinue it at least three months prior to pregnancy. There is another iron chelator, which is uh, desferioxamine, which can be given during pregnancy. We'll be starting it later. Okay. So these uh, should be discontinued. Then about the liver, uh, ferry scan uh, or liver T2 weighted MRI should be done and ideally liver iron should be less than 7 milligram per gram dye weight and liver and gallbladder and spleen if present ultrasound should be done to detect cholelithiasis and evidence of liver cirrhosis due to iron overload or transfusion, transfusion related viral hepatitis. Hepatitis C status should also be determined. Okay. So in all these patients where you who are chronically uh, okay. blood transfusion def, uh, blood. dependent, you have to do an hepatitis C status also. Otherwise, in routine for antenatal screening, uh, you do not do hepatitis C. It is not recommended. But for these patients, it is okay. recommended. Okay. Okay. How do we for this liver iron status? You do a ferry scan, scan or liver T2 weighted MRI. Okay, like uh, how do we know about the iron? Uh, so they, uh, in basically I, iron deposits in the liver and it causes hemochromatosis. Okay. Okay. So that from, can be oh, in from, 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 the scan of T2 okay. MRI. Okay. 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 Then uh, what are the medications that you will stop? You will stop d ferrocyrox and d ferriprone, which should be stopped three months before the pregnancy. Desferoxamine is another iron chelator. It has a short half-life. It is safe for infusion during the patient while the patient is ovulation uh, on ovulation induction or planning for pregnancy. It should be avoided in first trimet trimester and can be used after 20 weeks of the pregnancy at low doses. All bisphosphonates are contraindicated in pregnancy and should ideally be discontinued three months prior to pregnancy. Okay. okay. So bisphosphonate okay. should be discontinued three months and these d ferrocyrox and d ferriprone should be discontinued. Desferoxamine, it uh, should be discontinued in the first trimester. After 20 weeks, you can give if there is iron overload. Okay. okay. Then medication that you will start. Uh, do you, uh, like in the preconceptional period, if the patient is penectomized, you have to give a penicillin prophylaxis. And if they are allergic, you have to give erythromycin. Folic acid has to be given okay. and uh, it has to be commenced three months prior and given for the first three months. Uh, the reason is the same. Then vaccination, again, it is the same. Pneumococcal vaccine every five yearly, influenza yearly, uh, hemophilus influenza B and meningo uh, meningococcal C vaccine once in the lifetime, hepatitis B once in the lifetime, if not given previously. Okay. Okay. So this was about, uh, so what all medications will you stop and what will you start? In we the stop uh, yeah, D-ferriprone and... Uh, is the other one, D-ferrocerox. Yes. And uh, this Yes. Three months prior, we have to stop and we'll start, start on um, folic acid 5 milligrams only until three months of conception along with vaccines. Okay. And for if the patient is penectomized, yeah. then? Yeah. Same uh, penicillin, if allergic to penicillin, erythromycin. Yes. Okay.
then preconception because it's again genetically inherited so you have to do a genetic screening if the partner is affected and uh, the patient is also affected okay so then you can offer them ivf ICSI with uh, pre implantation genetic diagnosis pgd where they make the embryos and they send for testing to see whether the baby has it or not okay if the partner is a carrier then you do a genetic counseling if the partner status is unknown then you do a prenatal testing and an egg and sperm do uh, donors also should be screened for hemoglobinopathy okay okay ma'am then um, regarding counseling so all these are serious hemoglobinopathy beta thalassemia hbs hbe delta thalassemia and hbc is a mild variant okay then coming over to management during pregnancy so it should be with a multidisciplinary team they should be reviewed monthly till 28 weeks and then every two weekly thereafter for uh, uh, diabetes screening you have to do a fructosamine test you have to do a cardiac assessment at 28 weeks cardiac mri uh, for the iron overload thyroid function test should be tested then ultrasound this is again the same like uh, was for sickle cell viability scan you have to do at 7 to 9 then uh, ntnv scan 11 to 14 anomaly scan 20 weeks then every four weekly scan from 24 weeks of gestation okay this is same like sickle cell then blood transfusion when do you give blood transfusion if ideally your target to men should be to maintain the hemoglobin more than 10 if there is worsening maternal okay. anemia there if there is evidence of fetal growth restriction hemoglobin is less than 10 or pre patient previously on blood transfusion then you give blood transfusion and then hemoglobin should be monitored after 2 to 3 weeks and a two unit transfusion administered if the hemoglobin uh, if hemoglobin falls below 10 then you give two unit blood transfusion if the patient is okay. not transfused if the hemoglobin is above 8 at 36 weeks then uh, it should be given only uh, transfusion can be avoided prior to delivery you can think about it after delivery okay like if uh, ideally like in early pregnancy you have to maintain it up to 10 but if the patient has already reached 36 weeks and the hemoglobin is more than 8 it then you can uh, plan for transfusion after delivery also okay okay so now we are going to terminate yes then this is very very important asked multiple times okay. about the okay. prior to if it is cesarean section if Sorry? if her hemoglobin is 8 if her hemoglobin is suppose 8 only Mm-hmm. Then you say uh, pre-op usually then they don't then during like after during like post uh, during delivery if there is excessive loss they start for uh, blood transfusion. Okay. That's what they do. Not they in that beginning. Be right. Yes, because again it can result in complications. Okay. 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 Okay, so this this is the most important part uh, about the thromboprophile axis in uh, thalassemia. Almost all the papers have this. You have to remember this by heart. So, how do you decide for thromboprophile axis and aspirin? How if the patient has splenectomy, he and platelet count is uh, more than six lakh. Okay, then you. one of these if one of these is there either the patient is splenectomized or the platelet count is more than 6 lakh then you give only low low dose aspirin okay from 12 weeks okay if the patient is both splenectomized as well as the platelet count is more than 6 lakh then you give both low dose aspirin as well as lmwh okay and in case of hospital admissions you have to give prophylactic low dose uh, low molecular weight heparin okay so this you have to remember because you'll get come across this question is there any specific, there any specific dosage for a uh, low molecular weight heparin so it is prophylactic on... prophylactic dose is this only 1 mg per uh, is uh, one uh, this usually you give uh, 1 mg per kg okay 
okay ma'am yeah so this again they will give you a scenario that a patient with thalassemia um and her platelet count is suppose 7 lakh and she has been splenectomized how will you manage her what is the ideal treatment so you will give both uh, ecosprin aspirin from 12 weeks and also low molecular weight aspirin again they can give you another scenario patient is splenectomized platelet count is normal what will you only give aspirin then if there are no other risk factors if only the platelet count is high and the patient has spleen then again in that case also you will give low molecular weight uh, or you will give only aspirin okay either uh, okay uh, so either platelet count or splenic temperature or only uh, aspirin, aspirin if yeah. uh, in, if both combine we have to go for aspirin as well as low molecular weight aspirin prophylactically yeah. low molecular weight aspirin mm. okay yes then about iron chelation so myocardial iron uh, loading with t2 mri less than 10 ms or liver iron more than 15 mg per gram of uh, dry weight then you have to give desferoxamine so usually they don't give all these values you, i have okay, not okay. seen any questions uh, it was given in the guidelines so i put it here otherwise no need to break your head on all this so whenever there is iron overload you can give desferoxamine which can be given from 20 to 24 weeks dose also yeah actually uh, iron chelation is uh, only for uh, yeah Uh, not strictly in okay. the first trimester and how will you know about the iron overload either through the cardiac mri or the liver scan liver okay okay and this is the uh, this is the uh, for both they have given some values which the radiologist will evaluate and let you know okay if these are there then you have to give subcutaneous desferoxamine dose is 20 mg per kg per day on a minimum 4 to 5 days a week under joint hematology and cardiology reference from 20 to 24 weeks these women are at high high risk of cardiac decompensation and should commence uh, low dose uh, subcutaneous desferoxamine this have already told okay so basically you should remember if there is iron overload which you have seen through a cardiac mri or a liver scan you have to give desferoxamine from 20 to 20 weeks okay then about and we are giving 20 to 24 weeks yeah so basically after 20 weeks you can give okay if okay. required beyond 24 weeks we can continue yeah if required if required yes okay, okay. okay so uh, intrapartum care delivery will be under consultant led unit with the hematologist anesthetic senior obstetrician available uh, consultant available in uh, again this is same you have to arrange the blood in case th this is same as sickle cell if there are atypical antibodies you will cross match and keep the blood if there are no atypical antibodies you just group and save and uh, during labor also you have to give desferoxamine you give it as a dose of 2 g over 24 hours for a, for the duration of the labor okay and you have to do a continuous uh, ctg monitoring and it uh, usually you can go for a normal delivery it's not an indication for cesarean section and for both sickle cell as well as thalassemia you have to do active management of third stage of labor to avoid pth because again the hemoglobin is low okay okay then coming over to the postpartum care uh, so postpartum you have to give thrombo profile access this is again same as sickle cell if it's a normal delivery then you give it for 7 days cesarean you give it for 6 weeks okay okay iron chelation you can start desferoxamine it is secreted in breast milk but it is not orally absorbed and therefore it is not harmful to the baby okay so it is secreted in the breast milk sometimes they can give this as a one liner that it is not secreted it is secreted but it is not absorbed by the baby okay breast feeding yes it is not contraindicated during the pregnancy or postpartum so you can continue it if required then breast feeding it is safe and should be encouraged okay any doubts about thalassemia no ma'am okay 